came out from Japan in 1978 with our first gold record. Hey, nice, you ready to get a real job yet? Any drummer out there doesn't recollect that John Bonham was, and probably still is, the greatest rock drummer ever born, then they're lying. All of them have this little bit of a manic kind of animal little streak in them, which is kind of the nature of the beast with, with what they're doing. They're hitting things for a living. It's too hard, man. Too much respect for drummers. Frankie, he could never play bad. Even if he tried, if you play to put a gun to his head, he can play back. I'm playing drums with, um, I have to be able to lean on them. I have to be able to rely on them. I have to be able to trust them. If it's not coming from the drummer, you're dead. You're dead meat. Without the drama, there's no rock and roll. There's nothing. Thanks, that was great. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I left and he said, he goes, that's your guy. There's that element to your gig that you really have to wrap your head around. I mean, you're not gonna be the star of the show. Image is everything, and talent is... Every band is faceless, there's no heroes anymore. But out of all the guys, you were the only guy who hit a rim shot when I threw my hand up, and I said, that's the guy. Basically, everybody I played with was a legend. And I saw Ringo Starr, and I thought, I wanna be in the biggest band in the world one day. I wanna do what he does. Ringo Starr, the most overrated and underrated drummer of all time. I've been taken off from, from my dad and Buddy Rich. You can actually do Buddy Rich's licks? Yeah. I went down there and just started jamming, going crazy. Well, they secretly came and asked me to join their band. If you're not going to perform well on any job, you can be replaced just like that. I'd say all in all, when it gets right down to it, you gotta play for the song. You know, and the groove has got to be there. Welcome to the 2014 Chicago Vintage and Custom Drum Show. Jim Messina here for Vintage Drums Talk. And that's a terrific documentary you were just watching, wasn't it? And I'm sitting here with the creator of that documentary, Ferocious Drummers, Billy McCarthy. Good to meet you, nice to sir. Meet you, Jim. Nice to meet you. Say hello to the Vintage Drum community and the drum world out drummer. there. Hello, Vintage Drum community and drum. This is a great show. This is the it, first show I've been to. I'm telling you, I'm loving it. We have a great time covering it. This documentary, I tell you, when it was presented to me, uh, was very interesting because it uh, it seems to be an ongoing project with you. Is that true? It is an ongoing project. I mean, I've been in, at this documentary now for about uh, a little over, like, almost six years. Is that right? It's a long haul, yeah. Because when I first got the original idea back in uh, 2008 and I started, you know, I thought of this idea, you know, we had cable television coming to us. We had, you know, everybody was coming to us. But then all of a sudden, reality television kicked in. Uh, and then, you know, uh, things like Billy the Exterminator and A&E. And next thing you know, it's like, you know, well, this is a great thing. Because we originally intended to make this as a series on, like, A&E or something like that. Okay. We, we highlighted each generation of drummers. So the time started changing. And now, you know, I had a choice. Could I go on and make this for cable anymore? But then the more and more I watched, you know, the way the direction that television was going, the drummers we got in the film and the story, it, 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 it was just, I want to make it an historic film, so I'm taking my time on it, and there's a lot of work, but it's we're going to get there. How do you go about embarking on this? I mean, uh, some of the people in that, in that trailer, these are rock icons. What do you just call them up and say, hey, you don't know me, but uh, I'd like to talk to you. And well, it was actually kind of a snowballing effect. Okay. So when I first had the idea, the first guy I actually contacted was a legendary producer and engineer, Andy Johns. Mm -hmm. And he's done Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones, Cinderella, you name it. And I said, Andy, I got this idea about a documentary on drummers. I don't mean like how you hold your sticks or what kind of technique you got or what kind of drums you play. I want to get inside the character and the personality of the drummer. 
He says, well, that sounds like a brilliant idea, you know, he's from England. He says, but you know, I've done a damn many of these things on VH1 and you know, I don't want to do any more of these, but I'll do it for you because I like you. He says, here, call Carmine up. Carmine Apple. <laughs> Yes. Now, I was frightened when I said, call Carmen. I said, are you kidding? I, I, I'm not going to call Carmen. That guy hates everybody, right? You know, he, I was intimidated by him because, you know, I never met Carmen before. I just know he's a big, brawly drummer. So I called Carmen up, and he said, you know, I, I, I think I'll be interested in doing it. He said, call me in about a week. So I called Carmen. He said he would do it. As soon as Carmen said yes, Liberty DeVito from Billy Joel said Sheesh. yes. As soon as he said yes, I got a hold of Max Weinberg and his people, and Max called me personally at home. He said, hey, I want to be on your, on your movie, you know? And it just snowballed there. And one guy after another, you know, and they're just gracious. Everyone wants to be part of it because it's like, I think they really need to have their story told. So how many in all, at, at the count right now, how many do you have? Well, I've got about 24, 25 people, uh, including about 18 drummers. But, I mean, this may sound insane, but we have about, I have about 24 more people to interview. Sheesh. Now, now what do you do? You're, you're, this, this has got to be a, a costly venture. I mean, uh, are you going to them to interview them at, at their homes or studios or what? Well, we did, we did three locations. We did New York, we did L.A., and we did Chicago. And then we also did, like, some other remote stuff. Uh, we do go to some of their homes. I just got back from Hal Blaine. Uh, I got back, we, we got back, we did him in Palm Desert about a few weeks ago. And you are doing the actual interviewing yourself. Yeah, I'm doing the actual interviewing myself. I was a signed artist. I was on Atlantic Records. I did three albums. I played with some pretty good players out in Los Angeles. I was briefly, uh -huh. briefly in a band with Izzy Stratton from Guns N' Roses. I played with CeCe DeVille. I played with a lot of people back in the day hey. when I was coming up. But man, in no means am I a household name drummer. So when these drummers, when I called them, I never mentioned what I did. I just said... I was a recording artist and I was a drummer. I understand drums and drummers. Uh -huh. And I think they just said, okay, they're going to be asking some okay questions. And we just rolled with it, you know? And but the, my goal, though, is to, I have, I have to do 130 hours of footage to get to a two hour movie. Yeah. I mean, if you've ever done any kind of editing, you'll know what he's talking about. It takes a lot of raw footage to do what he's doing. It really does. A lot of it ends up in the cutting floor, but, you know, I want to make a great film, an historic film. I don't want to, it would be real easy for me to shut this down like two years ago or three years ago and run with the guys that I have, which are great and phenomenal. But I want a film for all generations, not only of drummers, I want this to appeal to music lovers. Because we are actually telling the history of music and how the beat ch uh, shaped our world and our society. Oh, I saw Hal Blaine was in there. Hal Blaine That's is great. <laughs> what an icon right there, and you know, you've got rock icons, but Hal Blaine, you know, he's been on just about every pop records all over the place. It's, 50, it's number one, 50 number one hits, 150 top 10 hits. Yeah. Six albums in a row that he played drums on, uh, won Grammy Awards each year, six years in a row from the Carpenters. And, uh, you know, that's another thing about this film. It's frustrating because it takes so long because of the financing and doing things yourself. I lost a lot of great people. I intended to get Joe Morello. Uh, He's not with us anymore. I wanted to get Mitch Mitchell. He died. So it's really important. You know, momentum's really an important thing in now, this film. You, are you in any collaboration with anyone else as far as making this happen uh, with the funding or, or, or producing are, or any of that? Uh, are, yeah, I do have a couple producers on it right now. The problem with the funding is that, you know, our initial budget we, when we started off was like, you know, it was up there in the six figures. So I look at it this way. They're making feature films in Hollywood and they're spending like 10, 20, 30 million dollars. I mean, if I have to spend a million bucks to make a great documentary, I don't think that's too much money to make a statement. Do you know what I mean? I, I see. I mean, I just, I just, I, I'm just, am I making Gone with the Wind? Maybe. But hey, what, what can I say, you know? So when's the last time you did an interview? Who was the last person you did? Well, I just got back from Hal Blaine, actually, about four four weeks ago. He we went out to Palm Desert. Fantastic. And, uh, it was great seeing him. Yeah, Hal is doing great. What was great. that like? Oh, it's unbelievable when you walk in because, you know, actually the first song that I ever learned as a kid was when I was seven years old. I was playing on uh, this chair, and it was <laughs> this diamond ring. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking, you know, when I'm playing this diamond ring on my... You know my pads, and, and I'm and I waited on WLS, and I waited until it came on the next hour, 
And I just, I loved that song. There was something about it. Yeah. So then when I got done with the song, and all those years, I thought, oh, God, you know, Gary Lewis and the Playboys. You know, Jerry Lewis' son. Sure. Well, Gary's a good drummer, I thought. Boy, is he a great drummer. And then I find out, like, 20, 30 years later, it wasn't even it was Gary. Never... It was Hal Blaine on drums. Blaine. <laughs> so it was remarkable actually meeting him and, 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 and connecting with him. It was just so weird because it's like, you know, I'm 54 years old. And when I first started playing, that was over like 48, 47 years ago. Jeez. And now I'm sitting in this guy's house talking to him. It was remarkable. And he's, he's just the kindest it's guy. It's a dream come true, isn't it? And he's the, mo he's the kindest guy in the world. You know, you see musicians all the time. They walk around with the attitudes, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, this and that, you know, I'm cool and this and that. This guy's a giant and he, he knows, you know, he's got, he knows how to treat people and it's, it's great. I see... In the trailer, you uh, you interviewed our own Bunny Carlos. No, I, I say our own because I view Bunny in in uh, in the vintage drum world. Okay, that's how how I relate to uh, to Bunny Carlos. But what was it like uh, interviewing Bunny? He's another one. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I didn't really want to tell Bunny. You know, hey, listen, I got to tell you, you know, I'm the biggest fan of you. You know, <laughs> because I don't want to make him like hey, hey, groupie boys here. You know, doing an interview. But like, I showed up at Bunny's house um, in uh, Rockford, and he's got that whole uh, barn going on with all yes. the vintage drums up there. But you know, when I grew up, it's like Cheap Trick was my favorite band in the world, hands down, that was it. I mean, I, I, I always model my drumming after uh, Bunny Carlos because of his openness, kind of slushy sloppiness, you know, on the drums, and then the power of like John Bonham. I try to put those two together. And, you know, if you look at people like uh, Steven Adler, for instance, from Guns yes. N' Roses, you yes. know, you can hear Bunny Carlos. If you listen to uh, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, you know, in Nirvana, you can hear Bunny Carlos, yeah. you know, in there. So Bunny's a big influence on the drumming community. And all my drummers were like, you know, I mean, who doesn't like Cheap Trick? Sure. <laughs> well, this is a fantastic venture, and I... I don't know how much longer you're going to continue rolling with this. Well, I'm not going to spend the next 10 years. I mean, I definitely want this film is going to be hopefully wrapped by uh, fall of this year. We're going, our intent is to build up all of our social media. Uh -huh. And then we're going to go for um, public funding on like, uh, you know, Kickstarter or maybe Indiegogo. Because, you know, I'm, we're rounding up. we got great sponsors behind us. we got Zildjian at the board. And we got a, a number of drum companies that are, are backing us right now. So uh, we get our social media up. We'll be able to finish this. I, I hope to have the film wrapped by fall. And uh, It's just it's, a matter of time, isn't it? It's, it, it's going it, to happen. It's, it it's is coming gonna, soon. Yeah, it is going to happen. I mean, yeah. it's like everything takes time, you know. And, uh, you know, I mean, some movies take like 10, you know, 12 years. Look at Denny uh, Tedesco. He did The Wrecking Crew. Right. And he started right. that movie in 1996. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to be here in like 2018 <laughs> and still be talking to you about, you know, <laughs> picking up drummers. But the great thing about our film, though, is that we have all these big name guys in there. But we are going to start calling for submissions from ordinary drummers around the world. I want 10 drummers that, you know, are firemen, cops, carpenters, painters. When they get done with work, they're, they go home and play their drums. That's the thing, because drummers are all alike. We're all in one community. Right. So it's not only about the big guns in the movie. It's about every the ordinary people, too, as well. You know, I'm going to get everybody involved in this movie, and uh, it's, it's all for drummers. Because, I mean, no one knows anything about the drummers, you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. Beyond your favorite yeah, bands. Right. Well, you're letting them know with this movie in a ferocious way, Ferocious Drummers documentaries, that what we're calling it? Yeah, it's Ferocious Drummers, the documentary, and uh, you can go to uh, ferociousdrummers.com, and we also have a Facebook page, and if you like our Facebook page and share with your friends, that's even better. We've got a lot of great promotions coming up, and uh, we're going to be giving away a lot of product, and it's been a wonderful coming to the show because, you know, I wrote a book in 2004. I didn't know if you know that. I was a published author. I did look that up online. Well, this is interesting, folks. I'll listen to this. We're going to jump over to a book now. Check this out. Well, no, no, no. The reason I mentioned the book, though, is just because when I used to do uh, these things at McCormick Place in Chicago for my book, uh -huh. I missed these conventions. This is a great excuse for me to actually come to a convention now, especially with the love of my life, drums. So, right. you know, the book world is like, you know, I mean, that was fun, but it's a little bit boring. You know? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is excitement to me. And it's all about the story. You can shoot whatever you want, but if you don't have a great story, you know, and coming from great storytellers like a drummer, 
All you have to yeah. do is let them talk, and there's the story. I They're mean, so prolific, too. Somebody it's, just has to do it, and you're doing it. Well, I hope I'm doing it, and I, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm gonna. My goal is to get it. You know, I got a lot of great support out there, though, and uh, well, really excited to. Uh, you got it. support from me, Billy. Thank you, Jim. I'm telling you. Thank you. Ferocious Drummers, the, the documentary, Billy McCarthy. We're coming to you from the Chicago Show 2014. My name's Jim Messina. It's an honor for me to be here with these folks. This year at the Rebeats Cafe, we've got more coming for you. Stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs>